I'm Terence. Oh, welcome, Terence. Welcome. Nice to meet you in that capacity. And who are you? Yeah, I'm Max. Um, and okay, Max. All right. Nice to meet you, Max. There must be a reason why you called. I I just discovered you like a few weeks ago, and I listened to your recordings. So there is like lots of stuff which was recorded now on you on YouTube. So it's great to 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 connect in that way. And um, I really appreciate your scientific uh, breakthroughs, which are uh, well recorded. And I I'm, I'm in particular I I'm working now on the DNA part of that, and you had wonderful hypothesis about DNA carrying the the memories and uh, involved in um, in thinking and uh, uh, your ideas about genetic evolution. It's all it's all amazing. It's nice to find that you pronounced that many years before others. Yeah, yes, thanks. I appreciate your um, uh, your nice kind words. So how did your views change after you uh, moved on and transitioned into the spirit? How did my abuse change? No, views, views, your views, your... Uh, oh, my your, view. Yeah. How did my views change? Well, yes, I still, I still maintain many of the things that I brought forth. Uh, as you could see, I, I was a visionary in many ways, and yes. so I am. Um, I, I like to look forward, uh, but I like to look forward from the present. And where I am right now, I'm looking forward to the, at the, the presence of your world and seeing that a lot of things that I said are still not there yet, but are coming. But um, I like the fact that from where I am now, I can see that there is more than one kind of way to manipulate uh, the DNA. There's more uh, than one way to handle uh, some of those solutions. And, and one of the things that I've discovered that is very amazing is that uh, when talking to the DNA, it actually listens, it actually pays attention to human thought processes when it is involved in the subject matter, it actually becomes involved in the conversation. Wow. So, uh, in the sense that you are manipulating your own body in a, in a way that is personal, private, and respectful. You see, your, your body, your mind is telling your body what to do. And re your body respects that. So it's just like smoking. If you smoke, your body is saying, we don't, it will eventually show you that it does not like that. It will reject smoking, or in some cases, and this is what I found amazing, in some cases, the body actually accepts it and does not cause any problem for that individual whatsoever during their entire life. So when, I, when we speak to our DNA, uh, what is its character and how do we connect it? What's its vibration? What is that um, personality of the DNA? It is your personality. It's the, the personality of the DNA is whoever you are. But if you're meaning scientifically, the personality of the D DNA is to create uh, the different eras of your reality, meaning as you are a child, it is to, to help you to learn as a, and uh, grow in size. It, it, it's a time release uh, intelligence. It makes sure that when you're at a certain age, you have these certain properties. When you're at uh, older age, you're starting to uh, close the circle back. Um, what I mean by that is, as you're a child, you're, you're, you're sort of innocent and, and your thought processes are being developed by those around you and by your own activities and your own uh, uh, curiosity. As an older person, if you re reach the age of elderly uh, person, you find that you're going to have more characteristics of a child because you're about ready 
to leave the earth and enter another body, perhaps, as, an, as a new individual. So you're preparing for a new, uh, a new regeneration. Right. So uh, when you mentioned that um, the... Uh, when you, when you do have, like in, in DMT trip, there you describe this um, visual speaking, uh, self-transforming transparent um, eggs or balls and, uh, and they had personality, they were friendly and you described that your best hypothesis that these are uh, maternity world in the spirit world and these are like uh, mothers which would welcome you to the new reality. So when you, come to the spirit world from that perspective what it was oh uh, yes when i came to the spirit world from that perspective that's exactly what it was it was the spirits of uh those that uh were going to return to life that it was the spirit of those that were in the process of being born it was the it was a wonderful and interesting process they were just friendly and aware and they they don't they were just exactly who they should be at that state of development. It was wonderful and fascinating. So basically, these are human spirits which you met. Yes. Uh, so DMT brings you to the level of uh, human spirits which are somewhere on the borderline between uh, ready to be entered in the human world. Is it right? Correct. Well, at least it did for me it will do different things for different people because some people are not ready for that experience because they wouldn't know what it is. I knew what it was, so I was ready for that experience. They may experience a more elemental or elementary kinds of experiences because that's where their understanding is. If they are greater in the intellectual capacity and spiritual understanding, then they might reach out to find a greater meaning and a greater perception of what is happening in their experience. Uh huh. So thank you. I get it. Uh, now, um, what's the difference between uh, the place uh, to which Salah Sabin brings you and the place to which DMT brings you? So, if DMT brings you to the spirits, to the place of the spirits. Where does psilocybin bring you? It brings you to the place of uh, original thought. It brings you to a, a place where you can uh, consciously be aware of what your thoughts are meaning to you and to others. It brings thought processes from other places to you that you can uh, perhaps try to comprehend, try to be part of, and uh, bring back into this realm so that people can understand themselves and others better. It also helps you understand the cosmos, the earth. It depends on what kind of mindset you're in when you go to that place. You can be in scientific mode. You can be in conversation mode. You can be in uh, different kinds of uh, modes, but it's always a learning experience at that point because you are going into that place in, uh, to learn something and 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 you absolutely will and you will bring it back uh, and whether it is to be shared or whether it is personal that you decide wonderful i get it it's like a mental body uh, you're more like in a, in a world where mental body is working Absolutely. The mentality of the body is exposed. It shows you where you are in your mental states. And it also helps you to correct that if that's what you so want. If you don't want that, then it doesn't help you do that. It helps you explore something else. But if you are smart enough when you go to this realm, you will try to find out as much about yourself as possible first, and then it will help you to gather the most optimum information that can be brought back from it. Right. Um, so now talking about um, LSD, what is uh, 
the spiritual place where LSD brings you? Well, LSD and ayahuasca and all those kinds of things take you to a different dimensional realm, meaning that you are now able to see things from a different realm view than you were able to see from the third dimension. So what you have to be aware of is that when you're doing these kinds of psychedelic drugs is that you're going to see another reality. You're going to experience what aliens and spirits and other things that are not part of third dimension. Uh -huh. And what's the difference between uh, ayahuasca and LSD, which, I mean, in, in spiritual meaning? Where, uh, does, where do they bring you? Ayahuasca is more cleansing. It, it cleanses the system. It cleanses the thought process. LSD does not do that. LSD actually is a more of a pollutant to the system, where ayahuasca is a cleanser to the system. Wow. Um, so if you want to meet the aliens, LSD and ayahuasca would be one of the paths, is it right? I would go with ayahuasca. The LSD is, like I said, is a pollutant. It can cause flashbacks later in your life because it gets trapped in the body. And, it tra and actually trapped in thought processes, meaning that if you have fears or something and uh, LSD had made, had made you see something fearful, it traps that, it can possibly trap that for a later uh, um, negative experience. But I like ayahuasca, it's more cleansing, it doesn't last, it doesn't stay in the system, it doesn't uh, build up and it's much uh, better. It's, you see actually clearer the next dimension. You see aliens in the fourth and fifth dimension. You see spirits from that dimension. It's much more true. Uh-huh. And what about cannabis? Um, what, what is the spiritual meaning of cannabis experience? Well, cannabis really doesn't, does not necessarily take you to another dimension but it certainly makes you more sensitive to another dimension and to another existence. You, some, you see things more clearly in the third dimension sometimes, and it brings you to a reality in third dimension that's above the reality that you are experiencing. Does that make sense to you? Yes, absolutely, yeah, uh-huh. And so therefore, with cannabis you're actually experiencing the super third dimension in a way that you couldn't experience it without it it's bringing you to an ultra sensitivity of clarity if that's the way you would like to use it it also can be very entertaining because it brings out uh, the ultra emotional side of the third dimension as well in your third dimensional body it's bringing you to uh optimums to experience the optimum areas if that's how you uh can use it now people use it for entertainment and for and, and so it's it's disheveled their thought processes do are not focused on what the cannabis is actually doing but if you use a thought process and focus, you can actually see the third dimension in a very clear and very different way. And it will optimize your, uh, the way that you experience it. Uh-huh. When you spoke about these things uh, in your life, you often mm, imply that you become, uh, you get, get into the relationship, into a relationship with, uh, with the plant itself or the plant species itself. Oh, so yes. What's the well, character of cannabis as a It's a as more a sensuous, spirit? yeah, it's more sensuous. It's um, in the sense that you, can, you become part of, of that reality. You can actually, uh, like I said, it's hyper third dimension. So when you're with that plant, you're actually with that plant. You're not, you're not just experiencing what it looks like or, or the beauty of it, but the emotion of the, uh, the sap going through it or how, 
it does photosynthesis. You can feel some of these essences as you become concentrated in the third dimension. Remember though, it's all third dimensional. Uh, uh, cannabis does not take you to another dimension. It hyper evaluates the third dimension. I see. So when you um, were in the body, you were pretty skeptical about new age and pretty skeptical about uh, human looking aliens. And now from your spirit perspective, did you change that opinion? Yes. Uh-huh. Uh, to some extent, yes. Because I didn't want to admit that whenever I was uh, tripping or going uh, with ayahuasca or, or uh, mar um, any of the drugs, that I did see aliens, but I actually did. I didn't want to describe them as aliens, so I called them demons or I called them spirits or whatever. But now, looking back, they were actually aliens. So I have to change that perception, at least that one uh, portion of my perception is that there were aliens in my perception when I was doing these things, because they are in another dimension, or at least I some see. of them. Uh, were you an alien hybrid in the physical body? I was hoping not, but I think that I was. All right. Were you an alien abductee? Did they actually guide you? They didn't abduct me, no. They were actually sort of afraid of me, I think. <laughs> right. Um, and what are you busy with now? What's your current agenda? My current agenda is to uh, continue my studies of, of different uh, drugs because there's some really unusual ones in other places. And um, they have drugs in other worlds that we, d we don't have on Earth or don't have, didn't have on Earth. And these ones cause even greater psychotropic experiences uh, and in a much purer way. So I'm studying that right now, too. The other thing I'm studying is the development of the brain and the de development of uh, what parts of the brain are affected by these psychotropic drugs and if you can control which part of the brain can be used with the psychotropic drugs you can actually uh, cause healing or um, greater um, identity to different things if, if they relate properly. Uh-huh. So yeah, that's the great question. So what's the mechanism of work, uh, of the work, say, uh, let's say psilocybin, is it making the brain more coherent or, or does it shift its activity from one, uh, uh, from one level? Uh, yes, it is, it's making the brain more coherent because what it's doing is bringing you into the thought process of what truly is the right information for that part of the brain, if, you, if that makes sense to you. Um, if, if that's what you wanted to do, it will concisely put into, uh, <clears throat> it will per concisely put everything into the right places. So you're, with this kind of information, if you know how to use it properly, it can actually bring great understanding. Uh, one of your hypotheses was that uh, heterocycles in um, psychoactive drugs are intercalating in DNA, and this will affect the, uh, their brain function. And I just wonder if that might be more in, uh, intercalation into microtubules, like Hamirov says, rather than DNA. Which one is, uh, which one is more correct? I didn't get that whole question. I'm sorry. Uh, you yeah. were you yeah. were sort of breathing different. All right. So heterocycles of uh, basically yeah. um, okay. aromatic uh, rings of the um, psychiatric drugs are uh, are the main um, common element, and they're similar to DNA and similar to tryptophan and microtubules. So DNA is within the nucleus, and microtubules are in the cytoplasm and outside of the cells, no, mostly in cytoplasm. 
So which ones are more, uh, is it right that the, the, the heterocycles are intercalating, basically getting inside of the DNA or are they playing outside? And are they playing more with the microtubules or the DNA? Actually, it can happen both ways depending on the drug. Some uh -huh. drugs are more uh, internal. They internalize themselves and others just go on the surface of the areas. Uh, let's say you let's say cannabis is more uh, surface related and does not get inside but if you're using a drug such as ayahuasca it will get inside because it is actually dna oriented and wants to it, it is its dna and your dna are uh, uh, wanting to know each other it's like a familiarity. Does that make sense to you? Yes, yes, yes. Except I think in ayahuasca the main agent is DMT, so it's it's yes. more like DMT getting into DNA rather than DNA of ayahuasca. I don't think the DNA of ayahuasca is entering the cells at all. I was just using it as the 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 term that most people would understand. All right. So, is, you, uh, do you think microtubules DMT? play also a huge role in uh, psychedelic drugs? I didn't hear that. What? Um, do you think that microtubules also play a huge role in psychedelic effects? Yes, I do. Oh, wonderful. Uh huh. I absolutely do. That makes very. It's actually quite clear that that is true, and um, it um, it shows in the experience uh, of what you're experiencing is uh, very much associated with that. Uh huh. So um, the main question I wish I got was, um, so you did, uh, you was exceptional speaker and exceptional thinker. Why did it happen? What, uh, was there some sort of spiritual or alien help coming to you? How did you achieve that? Well, I have to say, I think there was some alien help. I would just naturally find things and know things. It was like my brain opened up when I did some of these drugs and a lot of information would come in and a lot of understanding would be there and I would know exactly what to say at the right times. It was like uh, I was given the information at the right moment and sometimes I had not even studied some of these things but yet I know, knew about them and for quite clearly, from uh, it seems like some of my experiences from uh, learning about these uh, from these drug trips just automatically opened up at the right time, and I could see that information and say, "I got this information while I was here, there, or that." But it would open up just at the right times for me, and no one could confound me because. There, there was so much information that was around me, and it seemed to open up just as I needed it. Uh, did you have a, an interest in past life, which would uh, strengthen your success in in the, the latest life? Were you like uh, one of the spirits which had a history well, of doing that? I was told in a past life I was Homer. Do you know who Homer was? Uh, yes, yes, Homer, Iliad, Odyssey, yes. Yes, I was told that that's who I was in a past life. Oh, he was also into speaking. Yes. <laughs> Interesting. Uh huh. Are you? Are you? Um, and he was so, also into drugs. So also there was a what? Oh, really? I didn't know. Yeah. Wow. Which drugs did he use? Um, I am not quite sure what it was called back then, but it was cannabis related. I see. Wow. <laughs> but, <laughs> yes, so he also used some uh, drugs to help him open up to get those great ideas for some of his great um, epic stories. So, and whenever wow. he would do that, he was just right and right and right and right and right and right and right. So, uh -huh. and he, there's so much of his work that hasn't even been found, I guess, volumes. Which of the drugs would uh, help with the developing channeling capacity? Um, DMT. Wow, I see. 
Um, next thing is uh, you form the wonderful trinity of uh, Sheldrake, you and Abraham. Uh, and um, what is that? That, uh, that was mysterious. You guys were like really, when you were together, your, your level of thinking in, on, on camera was like way higher. How, how does it happen? What's the mystery? All right, let me tell you something. Do you know the group, The Grateful Dead? Yes, I heard about it. Um, the Grateful Dead used to do uh, psychedelic drugs also. And whenever they were on stage performing, it gave them the capacity to all become one in their thought process. And that made them the greatest jam band ever. They are still followed by many millions of people because they could change direction and all of them would follow exactly at the same time. Um, that is exactly what a certain kinds of drugs will do when you're with those of high intellect. You can contact, you connect with them on a level outside of the physical body. Uh huh. And so that is what we did. We jammed like the Grateful Dead, only we were intellects. I see, I see. Does that uh, make which, sense to you? Yeah, which of the drugs did you use all three? I guess I shouldn't ask it on camera. Yeah. No, um, you shouldn't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. But yes. Um, the thing is, it doesn't matter at this time because I'm not there. Yeah, but uh, the other, the other two is still here. Oh. Yep. Yeah, I, I'm not going to say that. That would hurt them. So, okay. <laughs> All right, but uh, let's let's place it in a different way. Which of the drugs would you suggest for group consumption uh, of high high level minds who want to uh, who want to think about the future of the humanity? Okay, it's uh, actually peyote. 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 I think it's peyote. pronounced peyote. peyote. It is a Native American plant, uh -huh. and it is used for their spirit journeys their spirit their spirit uh, journeys and uh -huh. it actually connects people together so when you look at me which one uh, would you recommend me to start with I could not tell you unless I knew you better all right that is fine I mean I wouldn't want to say something and then have you go do it and then say well what a quack he was um, <laughs> That's fine. Uh, thank you. I, I have another few minutes to speak to the fungus. I just wanted to, could you invite fungus to speak if, if it is available for speaking? I will see if they are available. I don't know. Uh, I know that they have sentience, but I uh -huh. don't know if they can speak your language. Uh-huh. Wonderful. It was fun to meet you and I hope to, that you will come again and we'll speak more. I'm sure we'll have more questions. I hope that um, I hope that I was uh, um, <laughs> clear enough. Uh, yeah, it, uh, yeah, much of you came through. I, I'm happy to connect on this level. Um, Excellent. Yeah, you're very popular these days on YouTube, so I'm sure this video will be appreciated by some, by many. Very well, thank you.